In this video tutorial, you are going to learn how to automate the calculation of wall openings by using Revit and Dynamo. Here you can see we have a very simple building with the property lines in dashed red lines along with a wall opening schedule. This has been pre-filled. You can see we have maximum openings for each side of the facade. For example, for the south side, we have 17% of maximum openings. Currently with the door and the window, we are at 10%. Let's try to add some more windows on the south side and see what happens. So I'm adding a few windows. Uh, nothing happens at the moment. However, we have this Dynamo script ready in the Dynamo player. I'm going to click on run. And you can see the, that the actual openings percentage has been moved to 19% and is now displayed in red because it is beyond the code limit of 17%. A quick thing before moving on with the video tutorial, you can get a copy of this entire workflow, including this Revit sample file, this Revit schedule, and the generic annotation family necessary for this workflow to work along with the Dynamo script up to date with Revit 2024. It is available with the manage package for Revit, which include course to help you become a better BIM manager. The managed package includes an ebook, PDF, video tutorials, the pro template, challenges to test what you've learned, access to the learning portal, multiple Dynamo scripts, and chat support. Learn more at revitpure.com slash manage or click the link in the video description. All right, let's start with this tutorial. The most crucial step in this workflow is to have a generic annotation family that we're going to use as a placeholder for all the data we're going to put inside of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to file and create a new family. Go to the annotation folders and select generic annotation family template. You can delete this red text. And now we need five shared parameters inside of this family. Here's the complete list. I've already created most of them in this shared uh, parameters, except for one called wall openings. So I'm going to create this wall openings and the data type for this is going to be area. All the other parameters are have already been created. Just make sure that you use the correct type of data, whether a length or text or area. And now in theory, I would need to add these parameters one by one by clicking here, clicking on this icon, selecting shared parameters, picking building side, and setting them to instance parameter. However, doing this one by one could be a little bit boring. So an alternative is to use droots1 and use the para, para manager tool. I'm going to click import export, import the shared parameter file that I'm using. In this case, it is located on the desktop. Now I can uh, check all the parameters, click on import. And now all the parameters have been added i just need to click on apply and one by one the parameters are added to this family there we go so if i go back to the building the family types menu you can see all the parameters are here the next thing i'm going to do is to use the label tool over here and click here at the intersection of the reference planes. I'm going to select building side. And here I can leave building side. I'm going to modify the horizontal line to put it to left in this case and just move it back so it is aligned here at the origin. Then I can adjust the boundary of the label. I will copy this label over here, modify this, click on edit label, remove building side and put limiting distance, I can put an actual sample value that is a length value, in this case, seven feet. After the limiting distance, we'll copy a label once again and edit the label. And this time we're going to put it the max openings and I could put in a value such as 50%, for example. I will copy this again and now the next uh, value that you should have is the wall openings, the, the wall area, sorry. So I'm going to put in wall area, remove this, and I can type in a sample value, let's say 2000 square feet. 
Copy this label once again over here. Edit the label. Now we're going to have the wall openings. Again, put in a reasonable value. For a sample. And finally, the last one is a parameter that is not there, but it is a calculated value. I'll start by removing this one. So the formula that you must use in this case is wall openings divided by wall area and then divided by one just to make sure that we don't have problem with the units. And I'm going to call this actual percentage. And here I can put in an actual percentage, let's say 10%. And that's it, we have all of them. The only things that we need to do still is to make sure that it is actually percentage values we're using. For example, the max opening is a number. So I'm going to click here and uncheck use default setting, set the percentage and set the proper unit symbol. I'm going to do the same thing for the calculated value by clicking here, clicking on this icon set it to percentage and set the symbol. The generic annotation family is complete. We're ready to load it inside of the project. Now I have prepared a sheet in the Revit project that is called wall openings percentage. I highly recommend having a dedicated, a dedicated internal sheet for this workflow. And in here, I even put uh, some red text annotation to help me when I'll be ready to place the generic annotation family. So now I'm going to the annotate tab, click on symbol, and I'm ready to uh, create a sample of this family. I will click here. So I might just slightly adjust the text like this. And now I can click on this and start filling up the information. For example, the building side, I can call this one south. The limiting distance, let's say this is going to be seven feet. The maximum openings, let's say, uh, this is 15%. And the rest of the information, we don't have it yet. It is the Dynamo script that is going to do the rest and automatically fill up these values. So now, assuming there are four sides to this building, I need to create four instances of this generic annotation family. So I'm just going to copy it two more times like this. Uh, for example, this one I'm going to call East, this one is going to be West, and this one is going to be North. The limiting distance, this is based on the distance from the building to the property line. I will just make up uh, values in this case to quickly fill up an 18. Of course, these values should be based on the building code. It depends what country you're living in. But in theory, you should fill this out once and unless wall moves in relation to property lines, you shouldn't have to touch this. And the Dynamo script doesn't modify these values. All right, so the next thing that we must do is set uh, the building side parameter to all walls and openings, including doors and windows and potentially the opening family as well. So I'm going to uh, the Manage tab go to project parameters. In this case, we have a single one to add, so I will not need uh, the DRoots plugin. I will click on shared parameters and I will add the building side. And make sure this is set to instance. And I will scroll down, find the walls and check it. I will check the windows as well. And I will check the doors right here. So this is my building right now. And let's assume that this is the south side. So here there's the building side and I will call this south. You must make sure that it is typed the exact same way. So in my case, it's all caps. Uh, this would be a west. I have this final wall. This will be east. And the cool thing about this workflow is you don't have to manually set uh, this building side value to the openings. This is going to be done automatically, but you do need to set it to all walls. The next thing that I must do is to create a node block schedule. The node block is using an annotation, a generic annotation family as the data inside of the schedule. So I will go to the view tab 
Here, I will click on the drop down menu for schedules and pick node block. And here you can see all uh, the generic annotation family. I will pick the one that I've created previously. It's gen annotation test. And now I can add all the information in this case. I don't need to add the cont one. It's going to be limiting distance, uh, the max openings, the wall area, and the wall openings. And I can also add uh, the same calculated value that I did add inside of the generic annotation family. So again, it is wall area divided by wall openings divided by one. And this is called actual percentage. Just like this, I can click on OK. And you can see what happens. This is basically almost exactly the same value that I can see on the generic annotation uh, themselves. So I'm going to find this schedule in the project browser. It is uh, right here. And I'm going to place it on my sheet just next to it or above it. So something that you must ensure is that these generic uh, annotation, they must never be deleted else you will lose data inside of the schedule. So I will pin them in if used internally, you can add some sort of text that says, please don't delete this. And finally, we want this actual percentage value to um, be read if it is above the maximum openings. So for that, I will create a new field by using a formula. And I'm going to call this the test value. The formula is going to be a max opening minus actual percentage. Here's my test value. However, I'm not going to show this so I can go to formatting and set it to hidden field. And I will select actual percentage here, go to conditional format. And the field I'm going to have test value less than zero. And if it's the case, it's going to be red. Just like this. So if uh, actual percentage is above max percentage, uh, this cell actual percentage is going to become red. Uh, so that's it. And I can actually just uh, test if I unpin this and enter kind of a random value for this wall area. Let's say this is 10. You can see automatically we have 67% for the percentage. I can see there's a little mistake over here. The actual percentage says 1.5. I will go back to the schedule, go to formatting, select actual percentage and click on field format, uncheck use default settings, set percentage and unit symbols use the percent. Just like this. So now I should have uh, the correct value. I can center them if I'm bothered by the fact that they're aligned to the left. So this actually looks a bit better, right? Uh, it seems that I didn't put this in the right order, right? Because this should be not 150%. Let's go back and let's fix this. I'm going back to the fields. No, it's actually actual percentage. Yeah, and it should be wall openings divided by wall area divided by one. So now this should work. There you go. Now I do have the reasonable percentage that works and it is still red. For example, if I just boost this value to, uh, let's say a thousand uh, square feet, you can see that this becomes 1% and is not red anymore. So we know that this schedule works, everything is set up and now we're ready to go to Dynamo. All right, this is the Dynamo script. I'm not going to give the entire instructions to recreate the script, you can get it if you have the managed package for Revit. But I'll just give a quick overview of it. So the first thing is to get all walls and only keep them the wall that have a building side value where the value is not empty. Then we use a node from the clockwork package that is called element point inserts so that uh, extract every single openings for the walls, including the doors and the windows. And then we uh, group them and get the area by using some sort of a mat sum value, basically multiplying the height by the width 
And finally here, we take all of this data and place it in the wall area and the wall openings parameter for the Jeremic annotation family. So the only thing missing in my script right now is in this family types, I just need to find, uh, there are a lot of families. It's much easier when it's already set to the correct one. So there it is. I can see my generic annotation test a family that I will select. And you can see right now the data is kind of empty. So we're going to run the script and see what happens. And you can see that the entire, uh, the entire schedule has been filled up. All these values, Dynamo took the value from the openings, calculated the area and put it back on in this placeholder in this generic annotation family. You can see there's a file thing that is bothering me right now. It's the max openings. Uh, once again, this should be a percentage, but it's a number. So I will just go to uh, max openings in formatting selecting field format and doing all the same steps I've already did a couple of times so far, setting the percentage, uh, going back here. Uh, you can see that everything is filled up correctly. And for example, if I decided that actually the south side, the max openings is not 15, it is only 5%, uh, percent, the cell will automatically turn red. Or if I decided to add more windows and run the script, it could also turn red if the percentage goes beyond the maximum allowed. One of the downside of this workflow is that it doesn't automatically update. You need to run the Dynamo script to update the percentage of openings. That's why I added a red text here that says run Dynamo script to update values. Each time you add openings or change the wall dimensions, you need to run the Dynamo script again. So again, if you don't feel like recreating this entire workflow from scratch, you can get all the files that you need, including the sample file, the schedule, the generic orientation family, the Dynamo script, a PDF guide about how to use this workflow by getting the managed package by Revit Pure uh, at revitpure.com slash manage or by clicking the link in the description. Else, have fun and see you next time.